What's up guys? We have a somewhat interesting start to our week with some blood work and a hair mineral analysis update. It's actually been quite a while, I'm not 100% sure. I'll check later, but I'm guessing better part of a year since we've done this. I did get blood work more recently, but there was nothing irregular like five or six months ago. Unfortunately, liver enzymes did start creeping up again. And uh, although they're still basically in the normal range, uh, they are higher than last time. And my ferritin did start creeping up. So even though I wasn't storing any iron in my liver for, you know, the better part of a year, I actually did just have to go donate blood again yesterday. Instantly felt a lot better, you know, later on in the day. But the ferritin still wasn't that high either. It was 54 on the scale of 30 to 400. And I generally try to keep it below 30 because... If the ferritin stays at a static amount, that means that the body is not storing excess iron, but as soon as it starts creeping up at all, that means more iron, more metals in the body, which is more overall tissue stress. So maybe we only have to donate blood like two or three times a year now instead of as frequently as possible. And quite a bit more to discuss on the hair mineral analysis. If you guys are unfamiliar with this, they can basically test your tissue for static mineral levels that are pretty accurate. Uh, I'll link that below if you guys are interested in it. But the main difference this time is instead of doing the hair, uh, we're doing the nails and toenails, which is a bit more accurate over a longer period of time. You're not gonna get as extreme results, especially if you're supplementing or making dietary changes in the nails as you would with the hair. You know, Because if I just start pounding magnesium and you know shave my head, every week and start testing, the levels are gonna be all over the place. So uh, the reason that these look a bit different than last time is partially because of that. So, you know, still not really in balance, but we're making progress. So the calcium went from 18 to 47, which is most likely tissue related, the difference in switching from the hair to the nails. Same with the magnesium, you know, we went from 1.6 to 11.5, so that looks way better than last time. Sodium and potassium are still a bit elevated. So, you know, we're trying to take small amounts of magnesium and calcium to eventually balance that out because that is the goal here. In order to be as healthy as possible and take as much stress off the liver, we want to have a balanced amount of all the minerals as low as possible. We want to basically hover above deficiency because the less things that are in your body, the easier you're going to be able to function, but you still want to make sure you're giving your body everything it needs. Uh, what's new is that copper and zinc uh, have gone down a bit. Copper is 0.4 from 1.3, so I'm definitely going to supplement copper today and tomorrow. That could be affecting my sleep because copper is very important for histamine. And I've noticed that like when drinking the water kefir or having larger meals, the heart palpitations are kind of intense. So I might be lacking on the copper. The zinc sunk down a little bit. Phosphorus went up, and it's important to note that just because a mineral is high doesn't mean you actually have too much of it in your diet. It could mean you're taking not enough or too much of other minerals that's throwing everything out of whack. Like in the case of the copper and the zinc, they might be depleted because I took too much magnesium. It's, it's hard to say. Iron is about the same. We didn't donate blood really, so... The manganese has went down a little bit, so maybe it was a bit on the high side last time, but it's balancing out. Chromium don't really care too much about. Selenium, about the same. We haven't really been taking it much. Boron shot down quite a bit from 0.14 to 0.03, so that's probably another supplemental thing with the hair where it was just high because we were supplementing it at the time. Cobalt's about the same, don't care that much. Uh, molybdenum. Again, was probably high from the supplementing and it has gone down a bit. But what shot down significantly is sulfur. And that's probably because minerals like molybdenum that I was taking are antagonistic to sulfur. So now the sulfur is actually pretty depleted. So in order to get the sulfur levels back up, since my diet is already super high in meat, we basically just have to stop supplementing the antagonistic minerals to sulfur. So overall, all I'm really going to do is take a little copper supplementation over the next month, maybe a few times, and keep the magnesium consistent, and then we'll see if things balance themselves back out. 
If not, we might have to do a little bit of the other minerals here and there, but we're getting close. We're getting close. You know, the calcium, magnesium, we're looking a little better. Uh, we messed up on the zinc copper stuff, but uh, hopefully this next hair metal analysis, we're even more balanced. Toxic elements have gone down. You know, they were never really that significant in the first place, but uh, since we stopped having the canned beans and some processed foods, and especially since we stopped the burger reviews, arsenic went down, mercury only a little bit, cadmium only a little bit. You know, again, we never really had much in the first place. And the aluminum went from 2.8 to 0.7. So there's definitely a difference in the dietary improvements and like switching to packaged beans instead of canned beans and just more glass jarred stuff. The additional elements... You know, we don't really care that much until they start getting really out of whack. So there's not much to focus on there. And then the ratios and the toxic ratios, we already uh, touched on what we're adjusting and, and what we're trying to fix. So, you know, it's really nice to get this uh, every few months to see kind of what you're slipping up on because you might think you're fixing deficiencies, but <laughs> you could be creating more deficiencies and, and making things more extreme. And in the context of my diet, where I'm eating pretty high copper plant foods like potatoes and mushrooms almost every day, it also goes to show the importance of supplementing and making sure you're getting highly bioavailable minerals that are easy to digest. And the uh, suggestions from uh, this website, this company, some of them are accurate, some of them are not. You know, obviously they told me to take copper. Uh, they told me to take some metabolic and digestive support stuff, but the supplements they recommend are kind of snake oil-ish. And then they say to take a vitamin E supplement, but you know, I've never found any significant research showing vitamin E can actually be supplemented. It's more about optimizing the body's antioxidant processes. Now, my guess here is my diet did not have enough bioavailable copper to regulate all of the iron. And since the copper in the diet was probably high enough, maybe the magnesium and some of the other minerals I was supplementing depleted my body of copper. So iron regulation went down, liver started storing iron again, and that's where you start getting histamine issues, heart palpitations, some sleeping problems from the extra iron on the liver plus the copper deficiency. So um, again, I, I donated blood yesterday. I already feel a lot better. Uh, so we'll see if the copper supplementation over the next few weeks kind of knocks things back into place. We also did a health update video some months ago where I explained you know, how much longer this is going to take me to fully heal. Uh, so, you know, we're guessing another two or three years of kind of monitoring this and being really careful about it. And then hopefully we're feeling a lot better. Although compared to how I felt years ago with the liver damage, you know, I'm miles, miles ahead. I'm feeling so, so much better. And, you know, we're just kind of slowly creeping back towards, you know, optimal health every day. Uh, but you guys can go to that website that I linked down below if you'd like to purchase your own hair mineral analysis. Uh, we have supplements and all different types of things available on all of my other businesses that will help you improve your health and balance things out. Whether it's having a high vitamin and mineral diet from Frankie's Free Range Meat, some probiotic water keeper stuff on Frankie's Free Range Foods to help the liver keep moving things function. Uh, we even have, you know, the Wi-Fi shielding clothing is super important for protecting the body and making sure you're absorbing nutrients and actual minerals are available on organsupplements.com. But there's really so much stuff, guys. So be sure to check out frank to look through all my interesting products on those businesses. But if you guys could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe and check that notification bell. And I'll see you guys soon.